Manchester. He's a footballer, he's an actor, and he's a massive community organiser. Give a big round of applause to Lammy, everybody. Um, solidarity, everyone. Um, I just want to tell you all about a fundraiser that we've got going on tonight called Music for Humanity at the Old Abbey Tap House. Um, before I do that, um, I've written some thoughts down which I'd love to share with you all. Um, so my name's Lamin, I'm an actor and activist, and I was very active during the Black Lives Matter movement after the killing of George Floyd. I was here on this very spot back in 2020 with over 20,000 people who came out to protest against the racist murder of George Floyd. Now I believe these issues are intimately connected. These past six months have highlighted the deep-rooted, institutionalised racism and Islamophobia in our country. And that has been highlighted in the media coverage of this genocide. Now the same racist, oppressive systems that oppress black people are the same evil systems responsible for this genocide in Palestine. It is one struggle. Now you don't have to be Palestinian to care about what's happening. You don't have to be Muslim to care about what's happening. You have to be a human being with a beating heart. 34,000 people confirmed killed. 14,500 of them are children. Children. Now it's our moral duty to call this out. And why are we made to feel like it's controversial? Why are we made to feel like it's a dirty word saying free Palestine? Many great activists from the history books proudly and loudly call for a free Palestine. And sadly here we are 75 years later calling for the same thing. For those who might be starting to feel isolated with their views and support for the people of Palestine, it's important to remember people from our history books who proudly supported Palestinian struggle. Muhammad Ali and Nelson Mandela, two titans who had global influence and are known all over the world who both stood up for what they believe in with integrity and dignity and called to an end to apartheid regime in Palestine. Well, what about present day? We have many celebrities and sporting figures calling for a free Palestine. The likes of Eric Cantona, and UK rapper Dave, and Marvel actor Benedict Wong, and Lewis Hamilton, and Paul Pogba, and Gary Lineker, and actor Riz Ahmed, and Stormzy, and Riyad Mahrez, and Mo Salah, and actors Pedro Pascal and Michael Ward, and Leah Williamson, and Maya Jama, and Little Sims, and Kid Coody, and Macklemore, and Zayn Malik, and the list goes on, and on, and on. The late, great Benjamin Zephaniah. Now they can't make this go away, this is a movement and we can't stop now. It's also very important to remember that although Muhammad Ali and Nelson Mandela are seen as great figures now, they were once vilified and literally imprisoned and called terrorists. Now the true terrorists are Keir Starmer and Richie Sunak, along with many other MPs in the British government, who are complicit and responsible for the deaths of 35,000 innocent Palestinians. Every single MP who refused to vote for a ceasefire has blood on their hands, and we must never let them forget that. I hope the deaths of every Palestinian haunts them for the rest of their lives. Now in the UK we have joint enterprise laws which are used to lock up people all over the UK. So you'd think if I sold you a gun and you used that to kill an innocent person, I would obviously go to jail for murder uh, and for joint enterprise and for selling you an illegal weapon. So the UK government are able to sell 400 million pounds worth of arms to Israel since 2015, yet they take the moral high ground. Those days are done. They're a bunch of criminals and we should never allow them and their government and our, their government um, as laws for our um, guideline and for our morality. I feel like the past six months has changed everything forever. It's irreversible. What has happened has been documented. I know many of you um, would have opposed the illegal rat war. And here we are 20 years later calling for peace again. But this time it's different. The horrific daily mobile phone footage and the destruction and death is undeniable. How can anyone deny that? The numerous calls from the UN and the ICJ and the landmark South Africa case in the criminal court saying that genocide is plausible. It will take years for it to all come out and people to be held to account and to brought to justice. And people will have the audacity to say, how did we let this happen? Why haven't we learned from our violent past and our history? Well, the truth is, millions of us have called this out. Globally, people are taken to the streets week in, week out for six months straight. There's a movement and unfortunately, if we're going to be really honest and open, our protests haven't had massive impact and been successful in an immediate ceasefire. And the Western governments are so powerful and have so much global influence, it's hard to topple that. But we live in the West and it's our job to call it out and hold them to account week in, week out and make it very clear that they don't represent us. Of course, boycotts are going to be a massive part of the fight and constant disruption to this evil war machine. Palestine Action are shutting down warehouses and taking down action week in, week out. And I believe this is one of the best ways we will truly change things. 
Now don't get me wrong, obviously I support protests, it's important to send solidarity and for people to connect and feel energised knowing that people care. This is a global movement of people calling for peace. We're simply calling for an end to this violence and for the evil Israeli occupation of the Palestinians. And we say, when there is no justice, there will be no peace. The silence has been shocking, but we're also getting censored and people are getting cancelled for speaking out. There's a lot of fear, and that's exactly what they want. We see venues like home cancelling shows after a little bit of pressure from a Zionist group. But then, they felt the pressure from this side, and a thousand of us turned up at the venue to condemn them for cancelling the show, highlighting Palestinian voices. They subsequently put the show back on. That is the power of protest. Now, what side of history will you fall on as an organisation? What side of history will you fall on as an individual? I'd like to end with a quote by Aaron Bushnell, an active US soldier who was in an extreme act of protest, as you'll, uh, many of you will know, set fire to himself and later died. Many of us ask, uh, like to ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery, or the Jim Crow South, or apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? Well, the answer is you're doing it right now. Um, finally, I just really want to quickly say, tonight at the Old Abitaf House from 7 till 10, um, there's a fundraiser called Music for Humanity. Turn up, buy a ticket on the door, we raised 1,400 last time. There's over 10 artists, poets, speakers, um, and it's going to be an amazing night to continue the conversation. Music's powerful, art is powerful, sport is powerful, protest is powerful, so let's continue the conversation. Sorry, everyone, thank you.